Hi guys, welcome to Scale Up Digital Simulation pre-session exercise. This is video number two. So if you've already completed the 34 minute introduction, high level overview to Scale Up, you're now ready to get into the pre-session exercise. The goal of this, the goal of this video is to give you a high level introduction to your pre-session exercise, and then have you complete and go through the steps of one of these cap table math exercises that we prepared for you. You can do it just off this video, or you can only also get access to the, the presentation of the material and work through the files that we prepared for you. So this is a strongly, strongly recommended pre-work exercise for scale-up digital simulation. You may be joining one of our programs within the education space. You may be joining one of our discovery sessions. You may be joining one of our uh, training programs. Regardless, we always, always recommend completing this exercise one or two days in advance before starting the actual scale of simulation. Now, people with extensive experience in venture financing may find this super easy. So if you have, for example, a uh, serial entrepreneur that have raised money multiple times, if you have an experienced VC running one, maybe two or three uh, funds, they may say, yeah, but this is, I don't really need this. And that's fine, that's fine. In that case, you can just skip through or even just fly through uh, this video. But for the majority of us, we need to train, prepare and get ready before starting the scale-up simulation. If you show up and you ha don't have the faintest idea of what cap table math, slicing the pie or venture financing is, or what it looks like, you're gonna start with a big, big drawback to yourself. Uh, we don't want that to happen. So strongly recommend work through this pre-exercise. All right, let's go meet Tim and Sarah. Tim and Sarah are two startup founders. They're gonna be the heroes of our opening story. So Tim and Sarah is starting a new company called Shockify. Shockify is a leading Nordic social media platform. It's a hybrid of TikTok and YouTube. The market is Nordic teenagers, but it's really a global company from day number one. The value proposition is bringing next generation into entertainment to your fingertips. The business model is a bit unsure. And on the financial side, there are two really techie founders with Tim and Sarah. They have both injected 250,000 they have met with some early angels and they're hoping to close their first 100 million Swedish found shortly. Well, at least they're hoping. But for those of you that have some experience, you'll now recognize that with only 500,000 cash in the company, they need to go raise some money. So the question here is, as a pre-session exercise, how can Tim and Sarah find the right investors and successfully raise funding? Uh, while also making the right decisions for themselves, the company, and the investors. Now, of course, that uh, invites the question, well, what are the right decisions? Uh, we'll, we'll see. Now, this is what Rick Rasmussen, a good friend of ours and, and myself, called slicing the pie in action. So we have Tim and Sarah, two founders. They have both injected 250000 each. That means that they own 50-50 of the company. Based on the available information, we can say that the total number of shares held in the company is, is 100,000. Tim owns 50,000. Sarah owns another 50,000. They've both injected 250,000 each. So the total amount invested is now 500,000. If you take 500,000, you divide it by 500,000 shares. That comes out to five per share. What happens once they start meeting investors? Now, right here, my friends, some of you can already run this in your head. You know the, the target range, both in terms of the, of the deal size, uh, the valuation range. You know what an ideal long-term funding roadmap should look like. But some of you may be just starting out on this adventure. So what happens once they start meeting investors? Let's take a look. First, they meet Jill. Jill is an angel investor and she typically likes to invest for one third of the company equity. It's a big round, but for the right, right investor, it may actually be a good choice. Or, or they may say, 
Jill, thanks, but no thanks. We want to go a different route. And they end up with something like this. Now here you can see they bring in not one, but three new investors. And in this equity setup, slicing the pie, Sarah gets 20%, down from 50%. Tim gets 20%, down from 50%. And three new investors each come in and get 20% each. So that could be that could be the setup. Now, because we're just starting out, it's easier for us to go back to Jill. So let's let's take a closer look at the first example. So we have new investor Jill coming in, and the target is to get one third each, one third for Sarah, one third for Tim, and one third for Jill. So here's typically the conversation. Hi there, I like what you're doing. I would be interested in becoming your first investor. I could invest up to 2.5 million. I think, so investor would set the terms here. I think a fair price of your company is 5 million pre-money or 7.5 million post. Typically some negotiation would follow. I'm a typical angel investor investing out of my own pocket, but I'm also hoping to get a significant, significant return. Notice here that Jill doesn't put a number on that significant return. That's something we're going to come back to in the actual scale-up simulation itself. Now, if we quickly run through the math here, old valuation, the original valuation that we had was 500,000 for 100,000 shares. The new valuation, which is always based on negotiation, is 5 million. So it's a 10x valuation increase. And the new investor, Jill, she wants to invest 2.5 million. The new post money valuation is now 5 million plus 2.5 million for 7.5 million total. And then the price per share is currently 50. Now, right here, this is what we call an entry level cap table math. It's going to get a little bit more complicated, but basically, this slide, this picture, these numbers right here is really important that you get. Here we have the old valuation, the old number of shares. There's a new valuation based on negotiation between the parties. A new investor, Jill, she wants to invest 2.5 million. The new post money valuation, which is the valuation plus the money that is now being invested, adds up 5 million plus 2.5 million, that's 7.5 million. And the new price per share, 50. Now, the way that we get there is what we call the cap table math. You, if you're an advanced or even intermediate user, you probably have a different setup. You may have a spreadsheet. You may just have run this in, in your head. But for most people, it's really, really strongly advised to work through the cap table math step by step. So the first part is, well, what is, what is the price per share? So to get there, you take the company valuation, which was $5 million based on, on her proposal, and you divide it by the total number of shares, so which is 100,000 shares. And that gets us to 50 per share. Next, how many new shares should we issue to Jill? Well, in this case, we take the investor offers to invest 2.5 million divided by the price per share, and that gets us 50,000 shares. So if you remember, Tim, Sarah each had 50,000, and now Jill comes in and she has 50,000 too. Then finally, how do we find the new ownership percentages? Well, we take the number of shares owned by person X, Jill, 50,000. And we divide it by the new total number of shares, both the old and the new, which is 150,000. And gets us now 33.3% to Jill. So this is the quick cap table math. And it leads us to three investors. Sarah, Tim, and Jill as the new investor. New total number of shares is now 150,000, and each of the investors slash founders have 50,000 shares, or 33.3%. Now, as we get that piece of the information, we want to enter, introduce the cap table. And the cap table is basically an ownership overview. Who owns, who owns the company? And here, we want to make sure that we add Tim and Sarah because they were the original founders. We want to make sure we add Jill as the first angel investor. We want to add the number of shares they each have, the percent ownership they each have, 
And then we add how much new cash was injected into the company, which in this case was 2.5 million. Now, very important, you wanna make sure you always check your math. And that's why we have on the bottom line, always make sure to close out and say, well, how many new, how many shares do we have in total? So that should be 150,000. What's the price per share? 50. And once you multiply those, you should get to a post money valuation, which is identical to what we had previously, seven and a half million. And this is the very simple cap table setup. And then you, as you progress later on in, in round number two and three and, and beyond, you always update, you bring in your old shareholders and your new investors, and you keep adding and adding and adding. Now in the scale-up simulation, you can expect to do somewhere between three to six of these investment rounds. In real life, if you're starting a company, you may do one, you may do two, or if you're a scale-up coach or a serial entrepreneur, you can easily get into 10 or 20 of these. So basic cap table math right here. And that of course leaves us with Tim, Sarah, Jill, now holding an equal 33% of the company. But of course, as time progresses, the company needs more financing in order to, to be able to continue to grow. And that would hypothetically introduce later stage investors like Jack, working for a venture capital firm, like Liz, working for a late stage venture fund, like Abdul, working for a sovereign wealth fund, possibly in the Middle East, and then finally Bob, working for a corporate capital, corporate venture capital arm. And over time, the company would be growing, raising financing, hopefully getting larger valuations for each round. Tim would get diluted, Sarah would get diluted, Jill would likely also get diluted. diluted. But this is part of that company building that you go through in scale up. And if you do it right, dilution doesn't really matter. So how do we calculate it? And, and what is this cap table math? So we have the cap table math canvas, which is designed to help people like yourself prepare and work through this in real life practice. We have your cap table. And if you're working with a real life startup, you may have this in a spreadsheet. You may have it in, in, in proper documents. You may have it on an online database. There's a lot of online services for cap tables right, uh, these days. And these are basic skills and basic documents that most companies should have. Now, let's get into your exercise. I'm going to introduce your exercise and then you get a chance to complete it. So your exercise is to complete the cap table math for hypercare. So Tim and Sarah was an opening example, opening story. Now you get a chance to complete it for cap table math for hypercare. So here we have new founders, Kathy and Aaron. The company is hypercare. Hypercare delivers the market's smartest home care solution through a combination of smartwatches, sensors, and AI. Hypercare provides the best and safest home care platform. Your market, you're looking to Europe and Japan as your test markets with their increased aging population. Value proposition, hypercare, safe homes, safe lives. The business model is hardware and software solution with a monthly recurring revenue model. And then you have two founders, each having injected into 250,000. And that's your opening. Now, your exercise, my friends, is just like in our previous example. Kathy has 50,000 shares. Aaron has 50,000 shares. Total, total amount invested is 500,000. 100,000 shares, that's five per share. And you're now getting accepted into a leading accelerator in Oslo. The accelerator invests 1 million at 10 million pre-money valuation. Your exercise is to complete the investment paperwork. You can do this on any piece of paper. You can take just a blank sheet and quickly work through it. Or you can use the next two pages to complete and update the cap table for hypercare. Now with two founders and the Oslo based accelerator. This is a pre-session exercise that you should be able and comfortable completing before starting the scale-up simulation. So we have the cap table math canvas, we have your cap table, and that is now your exercise. 
Once you have completed it, you are ready for the full scale scale up simulation. So I'm looking forward to seeing you and then working hands on, very fast, highly competitive environment to make sure that you come out on top of the scale up simulation. That's the pre session exercise. Thank you.